cop of Reddit, what criminal actually fascinated you with their criminal skills? Continually had to interview a man who was repeatedly arrested for running guns. Sometime about my fourth interview with a guy he explained to me that he earns about $250k in 3 months of smuggling them. He inevitably gets caught and was repeatedly sentenced to 9 months stints. 2 years but only serve 9 months. He also told me that no one ever seized his funds. They were all done in cash and left in a safe place. So he said he had a steady job where he made $250k for a year's worth of work and would retire in a few more years. Plus since it was all tax free and he lived cost free for his 9 months of incarceration he was banking it all. Dude basically made my entire life's earnings in 7 or so years. But the guys arresting him thought he was an idiot. That's something else. Whoa. Back in an earlier part of life, when I was a cop in Baltimore's western district, our sector had been getting hit with weird commercial burglaries that owners couldn't figure out how they were happening. Alarms weren't going off, and owners were showing up to ransack shops. We drove a lot of back alleys, and walked a lot of foot, for months, trying to catch this guy. Eventually, one winter midnight shift, we caught up to him. He finally hit a place that had motion alarms as well as entry alarms, and triggered it. It was about 3am, and it had been snowing lightly for a couple of hours. We got to the place in less than a minute, and the cop who took the back alley saw this dude running down the alley with about a half a block head start. He took off after him, radioed, and we all started converging. By the time we all got back there, and had closed off the ends of the alleys in the block, nobody could find this guy anywhere. That's okay, it was snowing. We're walking along following tracks in the snow in the alley, and they turn into a side alley and stop at the dead end. We looked at each other confused, and start shining flashlights around. My side partner says Mathurficking Spiderman. We look, and he's got the guy in his light, about 15 feet up, against the buildings. He had wedged himself into the corner of two buildings, and pressed his arms hands and legs feet out against the two walls, and used isometric pressure at that 90 degree angle to lift himself up and stay wedged up there, just looking down at us. Like some free climbing mountaineer, he came down, and got locked up. After interviewing him, over the course of days and weeks, a bunch of us went back to old burglary locations from the past few months and found where he had gotten in through roof access points. Dude was wiry, and strong as frick. Skittered up the sides of buildings in that same isometric counter pressure kind of way if he couldn't find any easier access. When you finally spotted him wedged up in the corner in the snow, I hope you gave him the you don't get to win, mother speech like carver on the wire. I remember a neighbor of mine having their bike, or was it BBQ, stolen, then returned the next day, along with an apology note stating that the thief had really needed it for the night, along with several apology tickets to a local sporting event, CFL football, for the family. When they went to the game, the thief thieves came back and robbed the house. This is savagely genius. A guy in our local jail wanted to escape. Now, our jail is pretty much escape proof if you are behind bars, but not so much if you are a trustee bringing food into the kitchen, or going to court, or going to the hospital, etc. So this guy went to the hospital for a problem and halfway from the doctor's office to the car there was a bathroom in the hallway. He told the guards he had to go. They escort him in, he pees, then back to jail. He tells this to his girlfriend. She dresses up as a dude, goes to that same bathroom, removes the hockey puck from the urinal and drops a hacksaw blade down the drain and attaches the blade by fishing wire back to the puck. Next time he goes to the hospital he goes to that same urinal. The guards are standing right there, but there is a urinal screen so it looks like he is shaking out the last drop, but in fact is reeling in the blade. Back to the jail. A hacksaw blade isn't enough to get through all the steel in the jail, but it is enough to make a hole in a window where he now went into the business of reeling drugs up from the ground with the fishing line. I had a guy that was IT for a mid-size company. He set up fake vendor accounts that went to his Google wallet. He then would make fake invoices for the fake company for software licenses and the company would pay a monthly subscription fee and the guy would pocket it. He never got caught. The scam snowballed to the point if he stopped someone would notice. So he confessed to the CEO and had minimal prison time and had to pay it back. Remember Brenda from accounting is going to pay whatever is on her desk. I worked in the jail for a short time before working patrol, and as such, I knew quite a few of our clients. A year or two into patrol, about 10 years ago, I am walking to my car which is parked on a city street after a call, and my keys are locked in the car. A client, 
who I remembered as always being rather funny, comes off his front porch, asks if I need help, and in less than 5 seconds he had my door open in one movement, he and his friends, and I just started laughing. I threw him a fist bump and that was the end. Now I have a whole kit to get into cars for emergencies like babies trapped inside, etc. I have practiced and tried to be good with it. I've also called unknown amounts of tow trucks to help people. I've watched locksmiths work. Nobody held a candle to this guy. Side note, Clant really cleaned up his life and owns a small but decent mechanic shop now. It's pretty nice to see. My dad is a cop. He once had a guy run a red light at 2am. The guy then stopped at the next light for about 3 minutes as it went through its cycles. My dad pulled him over and asked why he waited so long. The guy said since he ran the red light he thought he should stop extra long at the next one. Honestly, I'd have let him go for that one. Assuming he wasn't impaired or anything. Two local guys walked into Canadian Tire and just casually walked out of store with a full size canoe. Who would ever question that bold move? Got caught when went back in for the oars. I questioned for a long time why we put spider apps, a security device, on massive TVs that would take two people to carry. This stuff is why. Act confidently enough and it's pretty easy to steal. I have zero confidence so I'd suck at it. Not a cop, but look up the Banco Rio robbery in Argentina. That was some fine robbing. They entered the bank from the front door. Everyone on the ground, demand the bank vault to be open. They get in and close the door. Police arrive and start to negotiate through telephone calls. Negotiation lasts for hours as they threaten to kill everyone in the bank. Police finally go in, enter the vault and it was empty. No money, no people. An hour later they find behind a cabinet a hole in the wall. The hole led to the sewage system that ended up straight to the river. They put a boat in the sewage and escape through the river. They got caught because the wife of the gang leader turned him in because of a fight they had. The money never appeared. This is the umpteenth time I've heard of a crime where a girlfriend or wife got them caught. God dang. I had a shoplifter hitting the Walmart for TVs. He would go in the store, put a TV in the cart and go to customer service. He would request a refund for the television. To wit the customer service employee told him he needed a receipt. He would proceed to get agitated to the point where security would come over and escort him and the freaking TV back to his car. Away he would go. He took three local Walmarts for almost 20 TVs. Sometimes it's the simple strategy that's the best. My co-worker back in the day used work at a bank. He would copy checks and cash them. He was almost at a million dollars when his girlfriend got pee at him and snitched. He would be sitting on a beach somewhere if it wasn't for her. Lesson people. The only people that should know of your crime are the ones you commit it with. Are unethical life pro tips. Couple of idiots tried to steal an ATM. Chained it up to the back of an old 1975 Chrysler New Yorker. Weren't looking and it rolled into a convenience storefront window. Left the ATM and as the alarms from the store were going off. Made off with 50 plus cartons of cigarettes. Got pulled over on a highway cause one of them had to rock a pee. R.I.P. Mr. Jim Leahy. Not a cop, but worked with police after I was mugged. Basically, this young, really sweet looking couple would mug or pickpocket people, go to the bank of the victim and one of them would claim that his her wallet had been stolen and they had no money to get a new it and needed it to get a bank card. The sympathetic banker would buy the story and help them to get a new debit card under the victim's account. They were super charismatic and memorized all the other information they could find from the wallet. Full name, address, sometimes actual numbers from the bank card. Apparently in my case, the guy showed up with my credit card saying he had cancelled it by mistake as he thought it had been in his wallet when it was stolen. The banker gave him a new credit card and a debit card for my account. This happened to me 4 years ago, and they were still going strong this year. The only reason they were caught was because I happened to be at a bank, saw them pulling this crap, and recognized them from when they mugged me. Ex-deputy sheriff here, before I attended PD Academy and was able to become a road deputy, I worked corrections. One of the smartest people I've ever dealt with in that facility was a man on the second story of the tower I'll call inmate X. X would spend most of his days in his cell, asleep. He never went out in the pod. He never brought a lot of attention to himself. He just seemed like the typical guy who made an honest mistake and wanted to sleep his time away and go home. About month after we received X, he had to elevate the security level of another inmate in his cell. 5 bunks per cell, 20 cells per pod, because we found metal in his rack. 
two more months go by and X now has less than 90 days left of his initial 180 day sentence. Suddenly, an alert goes off in the pod. A deputy triggered his radio for backup when he went in the pod to find all but one of the 87 inmates high off their asses, having taken acid tabs smuggled in the jail and clear app. After we shook the pod down and searched for more, all we found was that inmate X was the only one who hadn't taken any drugs, because he was asleep. He had established a pattern of this so we believed him. Two days later, another alert goes up. This time everyone but X had taken some molly and the pod broke out in a happy